takes years to build up your reputation, five minutes to destroy it. I don't want to find out that my 9-0 was an 8-5 qualified. There's like these little skeletons in the closet. How do you discern one-tenth of a point? What's the difference between a 9 9, nine eight? Nothing. If you have money in giant size, wow. Because your book is not the book anymore. That's just how it is, man. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. CBCS has had every opportunity to take advantage of market and they have failed in every single way. Is it gonna be like a altered yellow label? I had it in my hands and this is not one word of a lie. The entire case just like a butterfly just opening its wings. Slid out, hit the floor, the label floated down. I was like, this is unreal. Right in the thick of all that controversy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Swagglehoss Talks to Dealers video. It's been a while since we had one on the channel, but this one felt important to do. With so much going on at CGC this year between lawsuits, JSA, 9-9s, I wanted to take the opportunity at WonderCon to get these guys' opinions on those current affairs. Have their customers shied away from graded books? Is JSA the end for CBCS? Are 9-8s going to zero? In this episode, we explore those questions. Of course, these videos tend to be on the longer side, so maybe grab some bags and boards, put us on in the background, and enjoy the show. And lastly, if you guys could like, comment, and subscribe, that would mean a lot. Your support helps me stay motivated and bringing the best type of content I can to you. Now, with all that out of the way, let's talk to some dealers. All right, well, I'm back again with Bob from High Grade Comics here, WonderCon 2024. Yep. Bob. Good morning. Hello to everybody. Been a long time. My main sort of question to start with you is, you know, we had a lot of big uh, scam reholder situations with CGC come out. Has that changed your customers' behavior at all? Are they kind of coming up and, and a little more cautious to buy CGC books? Has it affected you in any way at all? It, what do you think about it? Hasn't, thing? It hasn't affected online, but a customer, I mean, the only, uh, at WonderCon, I, I had one customer. Uh, came up and was concerned was the book on, on, on the list. And that was my Hulk 181.9. That's it. Basically wanted to know, uh, was this on the CGC list? And I said, no, because I've owned the book for two years. Right. So I, you know, I said, no. He's like, you know, he, he seemed very skeptical like that the book was legit. Interesting, okay. And other than that, I really haven't had a lot of people come up and, you know, talk about it or discuss it or, you know, like you, again, the same with when the market slows down, you feel you have to talk people off the ledge. Right. It's, it's the same when you have a CGC trust issue, there's always going to be the person that's very skeptical that, you know, I, I haven't gotten into any arguments of, oh, this book is clearly overgraded, undergraded. Right. Because that, that, that's, you know, a concern that somebody could have if you have a book that is overgraded, therefore now the fear is, was it switched? Right. So now you gotta look at the holder, you know, you have to, I mean, you, you still need to be careful. I mean, obviously I was disturbed when I watched the video of the guy who compromised the holder and made right. it and, and literally blew through it in like two minutes. So overall though, you would say you maybe had one customer. One customer that, that was legitimately concerned that the Hulk 181 was not what he said. But again, I didn't also have a lot of the books that there was scandals, you know, the, the Spider-Man 252s. Yeah, yeah, X-Men 266, yeah, things like 266. that. Yeah, 266, I didn't, I didn't have those books where I think if those were on my wall, you might have a little more concern. Even myself, you know, with the Mark Jeweler, you know, inserts, yeah. that would be a concern. All right, well, let me ask you this. Another recent sort of thing that came up about was uh, CGC acquiring JSA. They're going to do authenticated signatures. You're giving me the eye roll right away. Yeah. Obviously, I'd love to know what you think about that uh, part of their business now being a new thing. Listen, Signature Series, the, the idea behind it when it came out was always, you know, I, I get that you want to have the, auth auth you know, the authenticity. The problem is, is when you can acquire a service, you're only as good as the expert who's authenticated. Right. So there, there's been a lot of really good forgers over the years mm -hmm. uh, uh, that I will remain nameless, but that could forge Jack Kirby really well. Mm -hmm. There's been, you know, I have articles at home. I have a scammer file of a guy who was forging, you know, Jack or, or Ditko for like, can you imagine what if they authenticate a you know a, a Ditko that turns out to be fake? Right. It's 
you know, as I say, you know, it takes years to build up your reputation, five minutes to destroy it. Right. And this service is now opening them up to, you know, it's only as good as the guy doing it. Yeah. It only takes one mess All up. All it takes is one mess up. Yeah. You know, and again, you don't get forgiven, especially if it's on a big ticket item. Right. You know, like the Honus Wagner card that, you know, had, you know, was, was supposedly, you know, had, has... You never want books or, or an item that has a story. You never want to go, hey, you know, like just like with that qualified crap. Yeah. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to find out that my nine O was an eight five qualified. Right. Right. It's I don't want to find out my book that I, you know, that I bought, love, you know, proud to show around the show was a five five two years ago, and now it's a seven five. Nobody wants stories. They want. You know, this came from, a, you know, an old man who collected these books lovingly. Yeah. You know, never. And, and now it's like, you, you know, there's like these little skeletons in the closet. Yeah. You, know, you don't yeah. you just don't want that stuff. And that's what I feel like this. This is the door that's getting open. And pretty soon, you know, what are we going to have? Artists, you know, you're gonna have a holder that's got a little piece of a shirt from Steve Ditko. Hey, look, you know, this this was drawn with Sticko in his in, his, in Ditko's shirt. You know, it's worth Some, more now. They'll definitely Some, buy it. Somebody, yeah, will, somebody buy will buy it. it. Somebody will buy it. Somebody will get it. Yeah, I mean, you know, that was the same as when guys would write letters to Ditko, so he would return it, and then they sell the uh, you know they sell the letter. right, right. <laughs> well, they sell the envelope. Right, right. <laughs> so, so I mean, so even even with that, and in the first story, I think fair to say. You just, even if it's buying, you're buying the graded book, you still got to use your own eyeballs. You still got to really, ask questions. You yes, got to yes. be discerning. You really do. Okay. And, and the same with, I mean, is this a way to go back, you know, to buy, when, them buying, a, 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 is this a way to sort of compete with CBCS that will, you know, they'll authenticate or something without the artist, you know, being there? Is this a way to go back? You know, like when if, if Kirby signed on the splash page, for example, right. to say that's really a Kirby signature. Right. It's, you, you know, I, I see the, re it, it, listen, this is a business. Yeah. It, but it is an, another way, you know, that they can catch uh, some market share that they don't get today. Well, let Which, me finish out with, with one last question here. Big news coming out recently. Giant size X-Men 9-9 hitting the market. What's your thought? I mean, you've, I know you've been dealing for a long time. You've seen this a lot is, of these heavy books. As I said to my friend John, we're at the stage of the grading scale where it's like, okay, what can we do next? Right. You're, you're, you know, I mean, I've been submitting since 2000. Nine nines were very, t I've gotten a 10, I've gotten a nine nine. Took a lot of books to get it. By introducing this back into the market, it's, it's ironic now you know, all those nine eights are now open for regrades. Yeah. So it's, you know, you know, I, I say every book that you know has ten shots at getting regraded. You know, it's it's how many times can I punch the ticket? It's like when you buy a sandwich. Right. You know, how many right. times till I get a free one? This is my feeling with mm. the nine nine. Mm. It's think about it. How do you you know? This is a walkthrough. Yeah. This is the unlimited. Uh, this is the unlimited tier. You know, this ain't going through no uh, modern submission for a hundred bucks. Right. You get that first nine nine. Everybody runs around, and all of a sudden the nine eight market because it's on a common. You know, giant size X Men one. It's not a hard book to find. Right. And now all those nine eights. Everybody that owns one is going to look at theirs and yeah. go, "Why isn't this a nine nine?" I'll take a shot. CGC gets all those grading fees, and now they're walkthrough grading fees on an unlimited percentage. Hey, you know, it's yeah. it's 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 a business. It's the business. It's the business. I, I mean, I get it. It's you know, there's a there's a profit that can be made on something that traditionally has should have always been at you know you should have been able to get nine nights right what we make an announcement now we're going to grade them well it'll be interesting to see what happens it, yeah, i'm sure i'll have to check I, back I with know. you later on in the year but bob yeah it's always great to talk to always you always great nice to see you to and uh, we'll see you in the next one all right well i'm with brian wells from comic web brian it's good to see you again good to see you uh wonder swaggle swaggle yeah i'm wondercon 2024 here we are um well i've been going around you know i always like to do my talk to dealers type of videos and, and things like that I haven't had the chance to talk to dealers since, you know, a lot of the interesting CGC 
scandals, announcements, yeah. uh, company acquisitions. gate. Yeah, acquisitions. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious to ask you, you know, about this show, but also, you know, maybe previous shows that you've been doing in the last couple of months, uh, you know, in the wake of the Reholder situation and all that with CGC, yeah. what have you kind of noticed with you, the graded books that you have maybe for sale? Are people who buy from you, have they shown any concern with the books or is it kind of in business as usual? What are your thoughts? I think that they're looking up serial numbers more, mm. um, for sure, especially in front of me at the booth, uh, just to confirm. Uh, I've noticed that. Uh, but overall, I think the general consensus is graded books are still, while a big part of our market, they're still a, they're still in a niche situation for some people. Right. And I don't deal with, ma I mean, I'm a small time dealer compared to a lot of the guys here, that's for sure, 100%. And I'm very eclectic of what I, what I do with graded books, but the market is still there, the market is still healthy. Uh, there's just certain parts of it that a lot of the older guys are still, you know, the, the get off my lawn dealers, and they're gonna watch this too. I don't care. Uh, it's just, it's just part of that. They don't, they don't like graded books, and you're not gonna change your mind. Right, right. Uh, and there's a lot of customers the same way. Right. What, what, what is your sense like as far as the average customer? Like, can you put a percentage on it? Like, how many people do you think even know about it? Like, ten percent of collectors, fifty. 25 30 percent I think okay, yeah uh, they may have heard it but they don't know any details about it right they haven't they're not like us we're different you know when we when we, we listen to podcasts we watch YouTube videos so we're we're the zeitgeist but we're not what CGC is too worried about it, it, it once it hits mainstream and it's a hundred percent that's an issue with C for CGC I think right, right um they've heard of it but they don't know the details of it all they see is what's in front of them they're not it's the same thing with movie blogs and movie podcasts and stuff. They, they're not into it. We're we're all so concerned about Marvel and their quality of their movies and stuff. The general public doesn't care. Right. They just don't notice it. They right. don't care. It's not. They don't. We're the ones that are nerds. Right. And I love it. But yeah. it's just the truth. Yeah. Well, interesting stuff with CGC. Um, you know, the next big story, of course, that I've been asking people about is the JSA acquisition Massive. Sign signatures coming Massive. to CGC now. What was your sort of thought when you kind of heard about that, I guess, initial impression? My th I saw a meme and it, it kicked in. It's the, the meme of the guy, you know, by the by the tree and he's like this. I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what I thought of because all of us that have green label graded books in our collections or have signatures that we know are authentic but we can't do anything about it or you don't really want to send them to CBCS. CBCS has had every opportunity to take advantage of market and they have failed in every single way. Mm. And this to me was a massive blow mm. to them. Um, if anything was good and they can roll over any of this other controversial stuff, this JSA thing was going to do it. Right. I right. disagree. I, I agree that it it's a massive deal for CGC. Right, right. Do you think that, I don't know if like you've been in a situation where you've had gold label CBCS books and you've actually had a witnessed versus authenticated on the label like does the average person who buys do they even know the difference or care and where i'm going with that is like do you think that there's going to be a premium on say oh this book was witnessed versus this one was jsa or do you think at the end of the day people are going to see the label on big key gonna... books i do oh okay um but there's a lot of books that i bought being a valiant fan um and a collector um why would you fake a Jim Shooter signature or a Bob Layton signature? It doesn't make sense. So I had no problem buying green label slabs of those kind of things. Mm. And those collectors know what those signatures look like anyway, but you know, you get a giant size X-Men or or anything Claremont or anything like that. That that's a different the guys who are buying it want it want it to have that authenticated. Right. Um, and witness to me. To spend that premium price at least. There will be a premium price. Right. I think there will be, for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. It just depends on the collector and and the item that they're selling, especially Kibo. Gotcha. Well, you mentioned Giant Size X-Men 1, which is the perfect Ooh. segue into the last question I have for you. Ooh. Recent news, 9-9, nine, nine, Giant Size X-Men number one coming to market. What do you think about that? Uh, my first thought was, oh, now there's a 9-9? Nine, nine? Yeah. Now? Where have that been all these years? Uh, it it, it kind of surprised me, but didn't. Especially uh, watching your video on, uh, on on that whole start, right? Um, and by the way, look for it, watch it. Um, it was 
the general census I've heard is people are making a lot of jokes about it here. Um, general public are. So they know mm. about this. And a lot of dealers are rolling their eyes about it. Because it does one thing, it devalues night eights, period. It doesn't matter if there's one, it doesn't matter if there's ten. It right. just devalues nine eights. And if this is gonna become the new nine eight, a nine nine, it's a slippery slope. It's a slippery slope. And it doesn't matter if it's a key book, it doesn't matter if it's a, a, a beautiful bronze age book, it, it's a slippery slope no matter what. Right. It devalues everything. Yeah. Everything, you, period. Do you think I mean you talked about how there's some there's some big fish here, big dealers and stuff that you know, they'll have those Oh, I got the 98 Hulk 181 on the wall and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that game, like they're they're thinking to themselves, well, I mean, this book is perfect. Like, do you, you think it has to gonna... run through their head? Okay, it has to run through their head of cracking and re and resubmitting. Right, right. I mean, why wouldn't it? Right, right. If it takes you three times, what's the difference? Sure, because it's massive. That, if it sells for that massive premium, it's worth it's that. It's worth fee. it. It's worth yeah. the chance. Um, but it's also worth the chance of being lower. True. So, are you willing to gamble? I, I'm not a gambler. I just don't gamble with my money. I don't go to casinos. That's just me. And that's also, if my wife ever sees this, she knows that I said that out loud. Anyway, <laughs> um, it's, it's too much of a gamble. It's too much of a gamble for me. And uh, I, I wouldn't do it, but I understand why a dealer would. Yeah, some people will. Yeah, some people will. Right. There's a system to do it. They're going to do it. Right. Well, Brian, thank, thank you. you so much for taking the time. Absolutely. Hope you have a great rest of the WonderCon, and we'll talk to you on the next one. All right. Well, back with Christian hey, from everybody. Elvin's Comics. It's your comic book best friend, Christian from Elvin's Comics. But first, come on now, you know what we gotta do? You gotta get your swaggle on. Everyone should get a hype man <laughs> like Elvin. Last time we spoke, feels like 10 years ago. Woo, you know a long why? time, especially you know, in comic book life. Let me start here with the Reholder uh, swapping Holder swappers gate situation. Sure, you do a lot of shows, you do a lot of online sales. Do yeah, we just had our 400th show on Sunday in four years, four years, 400 shows. Do the math, kids. Get on your hustle bus. It is a lot, and I'm lot. and I'm curious if the you know your customers, the people that buy books from you. Mm -hmm. Now you, you tend to do more raw. From I, what do, I, I do, but, I do. I'm like the ODB. But but how I like it raw. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. I'm, not, I'm sorry, not sorry. Has there been any people that are like more discerning? Are they like asking a little more because questions? Because of the holder situation. Yeah. Or are they less trustworthy of, say, the occasional okay. CGC book that you might have for sale? Great question. Can I answer it two ways? Sure. So here's my first answer, and this is a kind of topic that, an answer to do with all of these topics. Mm. And I think I might have mentioned this before. I'm not sure. We and, and you, we think we're the comic collecting people. We are an very small percentage of comic collectors. Oh, yeah. Very small. Um, so when we hear this, we're like up in arms and how can this happen and we're aghast by it. What percentage of the people that come to my booth even know about it, do you think? Oh, it's got to be maybe 20 if that. Right. So it's a small percentage of the people that know. So the question really is, for the people that know, how are they affected? Mm. So I just want to kind of clarify that because we can think that everyone sits and watch YouTube videos all the time and everyone is on Instagram looking at stuff and, and it's not some small percentage so for the people that know I think it was for people that wanted CGC to be bad they're like haha pitchforks right right I think for some people they're like "Ooh, are my numbers on there mm -hmm. if my numbers are on there then I'm, I'm I'm in trouble right I think for the larger comic people I think there's like oh smell well, honestly yeah. Honestly, I think there's people that are upset about it, and rightfully so. And I think there's people like Mickey Swaggle and, and some of the other guys that you, that you have on, that Dave or whatever it was, they kind of broke it. And, and, and great job on those dudes. Like, great job. Like, seriously, great job on because that's important to know it. I personally don't think it's really changed much for the larger comic audience. If I was a CGC person, if, I, if I've been spending tens of thousands of dollars on CGC books like a lot of you are, then I'm very concerned. Mm. Because we're just putting our trust in CGC. Right. Right? And now all of a sudden we're realizing trust not well placed in right. this particular area. Right. right? Because it's a pretty to me it's a pretty big mistake. Yeah. Like if, if I submit a book and I think it's a nine eight and I get it a nine six, yeah I'm upset, but like really? I mean come on, what's the difference? But these are major, major major issues yeah so it makes me sort of think there is some tightening up they need to do so if i have a lot of money invested in it then i would be like hey what's going on here but honestly for the larger people 
I don't think it really makes a ripple. But for us, I think it's like, whoa, you know what I mean? So yeah. I don't know if that's the answer or not, but that's what I'm going to say. Yeah, it, it is kind of the answer. I mean, I, I, it's sort of my suspicion that that's mm -hmm. what it is. You know, a lot of people go to the shows, like you say, they, they want to buy the book, they buy the book. Right. And if it's in the label, right. it doesn't really you know, right. affect their I, decision. I, I think the, I, uh, the whole thing with the Mark Jewelers in there, not having the Mark Jewelers in there, um, I, I will tell you this on the Mark Jewelers front, that I, I've been a Mark Jewelers buyer for about a decade. Mm -hmm. And I have, I sell them on my live sales sporadically recently more, and there is definitely a hunger for them. Mm. So that much, I don't know if it's a byproduct of that, if it's like heightens the awareness of it, but I would tell you that's one of my first of the year thoughts is there's a Mark Jewelers increase in demand. Interesting. And I still don't think it increases, the, it's, it's like the tip of it. Right. Like there's going to be a time when those books are going to be very, very premium. But right now, there's just it's more of a, an interest, but I've seen more. I've seen more. Right. So JSA, uh -huh. coming in here, now we have signed books being authenticated for CGC, which is something right. that they never offered before. Right. I guess my question to you is twofold. One, mm -hmm. what was your thoughts when you first heard the news? And then two, do you think it's going to change anything as far as like, you know, it's a great question. values for this? Great question. Does it put CBCS out of business? Great the one question. thing that they had over them? Right. What do you think? So I think those are great questions and that's why we watch, right? Those are really great questions. It's not like, dude, it's cool, right? Because that's what you get with some YouTubers. And that's not what you get from him. And again, I, I always speak the truth. The next time I lie is the first time. So that, that's why we all watch you. Because that's a really great question. Mm. So here's what I would say. I would say that, first off, my first thought was like, finally. Mm. Like, do you like money? Like, if you're selling burgers, like, you're not selling fries? Right. It doesn't make any sense, right? Yeah. I can't pay you more to put bacon on my burger? It doesn't mm. make any sense. Mm. Especially when other restaurants are putting bacon on the burger. Mm. And this one place is like, no, we just won't take your extra buck fifty for three slices of bacon. Mm. So, like, finally, um, I do think they did it purposefully. Mm. And that's not wrong. But it's just to acknowledge they did it purposely. Like, oh, this is, you know, we can get the scent off of this a little bit. And I think it did work. Um, I think it is going to matter, actually. Um, I don't do a lot of CGC books. We've talked about it before. Yeah. I'm, I'm, and, and for those of you that do, man, awesome. Uh, I, I sell mostly raw books and, and like them that way myself. But there's a lot of people that will be like, I don't want a signature on my book because I want to grade it. I don't want the label. So now CGC is taking care of that. Right. I think it's going to increase their market share, which is already huge. I think it's going to make someone like myself that has signed books that I will tell you, I got this book signed myself. Like, I witnessed Stan Sakai signing this. I got Mike Manola to sign this. I got Clemmer to sign this myself. I got Babs Tar to remark and sign this book. Right. And now you can send that in and you can get the right label on it. I think that does increase my business and everyone's business. So I think it's a great move. For them now, I, I know there's people that like both companies, and and that's great. You like going to Wendy's, and great. I'm, I like going to In and Out. I like In and Out, right? I like Tommy Burger, best burger in California. You heard it here, Tommy Burger. That's where I like to go, right? So you want to go to to Wendy's, great. But I'm very concerned if I'm them. Yeah. What this means is what what CBCS has to do is get their senses going, mm -hmm. even in the beginning where it's going to show them not as good. That's why they don't do it. Because when they get their census going, you're gonna be able to see the numbers do not line up. Right. But they're gonna to have to cycle through that and go through that PR hit because they have to do that. They right. have to come back with something. If they don't do something. I, I, I don't see how they can what they could do. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like because it is similar. It's not like Magic Mountain and Disneyland. Those are different things. Swag. Right. Those are right. not the same things. Right. They're the same thing. Yeah. It's the same thing. And now they're doing the thing that they didn't do. So like I don't did they like sign a ten year non compete in this? Is that why they waited so long? Yeah, like I don't why? Know. Like why now? So yeah. but now they're doing it. I think it's gonna change, change, change. Um, I'm very concerned if I'm CBCS, mm -hmm. and if I'm holding a lot of CBS CBCS books, you're probably thinking of cracking and submitting. Yeah. I'd imagine 95% of you are thinking of cracking and submitting. Another big CGC news event. Mm -hmm. Giant size X Men number one. This has been CGC. the topic. This has been the topic of the weekend. Yeah, a lot this, of people talking about it. Lot, lot, I've had a lot of conversations about it. Jay and I talked about it a bunch. I've talked to about uh, 12 people at the booth mm. out of 1,000, uh, but that's a pretty good percentage. Um, here's my initial thought is, um, wow, if you have money in, in giant size, wow. 
because your book is not the book anymore. And that's just how it is, man. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. That's just how it is. There is a better book. That's it. There's a better book. And I also think it's something purposeful for them. Mm -hmm. My second thought is, when does the 99 first Punisher come out? When does the 99 this come out? When does the 99 Ghost Rider come out? There's not even a 98 on the Ghost Rider book, I don't think. There's four of them. There's four 98s. So maybe it's a low chance, but but who knows? Maybe it's coming. Yeah. So for people who have invested tons of money in the 98, I'm quaking because your book is not the book anymore. I'm sorry to say that. Um, again, it's not my strength. It's not what I do. I don't really sell. Them. I, I, have, I have one on the wall signed by Stan Lee, but it's not really kind of what I do. It's a real small percentage of my yeah. business. But for some of you, it's your business. It, it is what you do. Right. You don't want to have the raw books. You want it graded, and I understand why that is, right? And, and I support you and and all that. But now you're concerned because it's not only the giant size. It's every book of that time. The yeah. nine nine is coming. It, it feels like to me, if I can make a sports analogy, what's happening in the NBA right now. The NBA decided we need to crack down on this crazy offense and they're not calling fouls. They came out last week and said, yes, we talked about this. So they like said, yes, we purposely did this. Right. This is the same thing the CGC did. Yeah. They sat in their meetings and said, what are we gonna do? And someone said, we gotta get a 9-9 now on this ball. That's what happened. Yeah. Now that's concerning because you, you should only get the 9-9 when the 9-9 comes in. Right. What's the difference between a 9998? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. So it's concerning. Again, I'm not an expert on this at all, and I'm not besmirching anybody. I'm not an anti cgc -er. I'm a pro comic book life people. So yes, but that's a question asked, and that's my thought, is it's a purposeful thing to do, and if I'm holding high-grade Bronze Age keys, the 9-8s, the 9-9s are coming. And then pretty soon it's going to be the tens. We have already seen them when all those story variants come out in tens, right? Like, what's the difference? Right. There's not. So, it's great questions. Uh, there's lots to talk about with it. Uh, but again, I think it really has to do with a lot of small people because who has these nine eights in these big books? You guys do because some of you are putting tons of money into it, and you're concerned. Yeah. Or you're like, I'm trading my nine. I'm going to trade three nine eights for the nine nine. I got to get the nine nine, right? And then yeah, do that, right? But it's a, to me, for the guys like my friend Nico over there that do a lot of the big slabs, yeah. like this impacts his business a big time. Oh, yeah. Because suddenly he doesn't have the big books. And he's, Nico's got big books, yeah. right? Yeah. Now he doesn't. Because even though like the 9-9 of whatever, the, of Ghost Rider hasn't come out yet, it's going to. Yeah. It's going to. Yeah. And, you know, maybe it really is a 9-9, whatever that is. But it, to me, it's a serious. That, that's to me the most impactful of the three yeah, items. Sure, Interesting. Is this yeah. more than the reholder gate? More than because that was they already did the lawsuit on the one yeah, guy, the yeah. couple. They already said that, that's who did it. It's more than that. Whatever. They already found their scapegoat. And then the other issue is good. This to me is the juiciest of the issues yeah. because like. Is there a 9-9 for Punisher, do you know? You know there is know. not. There's going to be. There will be. Whoever has a yeah. Punisher 9-8, you are quaking because that's the next one. The next one is a Punisher 9-9 is coming. Yeah. Right? And then it's going to, you know, again, it changes the market. It's been always great talking to you, sir. This guy. Christian. This guy. Thank you again for taking the time. Th 30 seconds. Make sure you get the sanity books from a man right here. You've been a, a topic of conversation at the booth a lot. I get a lot of people that come by my booth and say, hey, I see you on Swaggle, man. And, and they're telling me, hey, cool job. But what they're, what they're saying is they watch Swaggle, right? Like there's so many people that watch this guy. And I'll tell you from my heart, truthfully, he deserves it, man. He's an incredible dude. If you've never had a chance to meet him, if he ever gets to one of your shows, man, walk up to him. He's an incredible guy. I watch him. He's so kind and generous with his time. He's a genuine dude. We talked on Friday, not even about comic books, yeah. right? We weren't talking about comic books. We are talking about life. So. Let's keep supporting them. Support all the content creators, man, because they're doing that for us. And right now, you got to get your swag along. So I appreciate it, Mickey. We appreciate you. And um, peace out. Get out. Get yourself a hype man like Elvin's Comics. All right, well, I'm with Fernando from TNK Comics. Fernando, it's good to see you, man. How are you doing? Good to see you, Mickey. There hasn't been any feedback about CGC. We have seen a little bit more of an uptick with CBCS. People are starting to buy a little bit more of those. Um, this show specifically, I think we've maybe sold 14 CBCS books just randomly. Wow. Um, but and, and that's not usual for what you would have expected. Correct, correct. Okay. So, and normally you see CGC with the primary, with the more so uh, in the forefront of everything. But um, 
the guests aren't really talking about it. The, you know, the buyers aren't really talking about it. So obviously, for them, I think it's out of sight, out of mind already. Right. But you know, for me, you know, it, as somebody who would submit books, I'm kind of pulled back from submitting. I'm. Mm. I'm still buying CGC stuff, but I'm right. not submitting as often or as you know frequently as I would. Uh, I kind of want to see what how it plays out a little bit more, and then kind of go from there and see what it does. But me personally, but as a vendor looking out, I mean CGC is still king. Yeah. They're still on the throne. Yeah, they're they're still not going in, anywhere. Still um, but you know, uh, I think that leads into you know just an opportunity for CBCS to kind of see what else they can do. Yeah. Well, speaking of that opportunity, or maybe missed opportunity where they used to have the the authentication signature right. thing over CGC but CGC recently acquired JSA right. which kind of shakes up things in the market as far as autographs are concerned do you have any thoughts on the JSA acquisition you know what do you think about that I, I think it the acquisition was a long time coming mm. I think it was something that CGC needed uh, I know that it I know the the value of the signature series yellow label because somebody witnessed it, somebody went through the steps to do it. I know that has a higher value. And obviously, if we're going to have something with the authentication coming through with this now, you know, are we changing the label? Are we going to just have, you know, verified on it or something like that? I think that could play a factor with the collectors because we're all OCD and we all like things to look the same. So I think that'll play into it. But I think having JSA is going to be really a big move. And I think it can play out to be very beneficial for them. But I think we've got to see what the first few books look like coming out of it. Right, right. Do you think that there will be a difference in value between witness and authenticated? And actually, have you ever found yourself in a situation with a CBCS book where you had a witness and you had an authenticated? And has anyone ever asked you or like been more like, oh, I don't like authenticated from CBCS? Do you think there's any behavior that affects that? Um, I think with the CBCS thing, I think that's just, uh, we're so ingrained to like CGC more. I, so I think a lot of people just kind of ignore the whole CBCS part of it. Right. At least I haven't had to run through that personally myself. Um, but I think, you know, the, I think with the, what they're going to be having with everything, I think it will play with value potentially because like I said, if the label doesn't match up or is it going to be like a altered yellow label potentially, you know, right. or what are we going to see out of that? I think that's where you can play with it. But also like, you know, you have a lot of these, a lot of these signatures from artists and creators who are no longer with us. So it's, you know, people are gonna start bringing stuff out of the woodwork. And it's like, well, how do you really know? Like, what do you have? So I, there can be some of that, but I think that's, I don't know. For me, I think that's gonna be a big deal for that, but I, we can't tell the value and foresee the future. Like, you know, hey, we don't know if we're going to the moon or not with it, yeah. but um, I think it's something that, you know, we have to see what the first few books look like. And I said, you know, is there gonna be comp, comp sales for Stan Lee signatures that are now verified versus ones that we we ever witnessed. Yeah. Do what do you see on that, right? I think that's where we have to see what it's gonna look like and then from there we can start to play with numbers. Yeah, my, my guess is that it'll be inconclusive, but we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. Yeah. Um, all right, well, the last thing that I got to ask you about, the last sort of big news event was, of course, Giant Size X-Men 199 coming to market. You know, there's been a lot of conversation about CGC 99s and 10s and what feels like maybe a push to start creating a little bit more of that. Um, I guess, what was your initial thought when that happens and that came out? And two, are you now looking at your 9-8 books and being like, well, I don't know, like maybe this has a chance for CPR. What, what's your feeling? Um, so first we'll go with the, the CPR on, on some 9-8s. Uh, do I think that some of the 9-8s now could use a bump? Potentially. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, Giant Size X-Men, you know, we sold the 9-9 we had already today. So that, uh, yeah, yeah, I missed out on that one. Just kidding. Um, but, you know, we have, you know, there's got to be a book. You want to play both sides. I, I like to believe in, on the both sides of it. Like, you want to believe that there are really mint condition books out there that can achieve that 9.9, .9, no matter what the age is on it. You want to believe in that, but you also want to be like, are we just getting 9.9s now just to kind of like thin the market out, or is it just because we don't have enough of them? Uh, yeah. I, I hope that's not the case. I'd like to, I'm more half full, and I want to be like, hey, there's good books out there. Right. But, you know. I'm also a realist and it's like, yeah, a lot, majority of the books I run across, they're not a 9-9. All right, well, back again with Nico from The Blue Chip. Nico? My man. Always good to see you. WonderCon 2024. This is the first time I've been able to talk to a lot of you guys since CGC has basically had like 10 years of current affair news pop up. Have you noticed people reacting differently to CGC books at all? What's your thought? You know, this, what's crazy is this, you know, I really didn't give it too much energy to be honest, right? CGC helped create a basis for value. They were able to genuinely allow a hobby to almost become tangible investments at a level that could have never happened until a company like CGC emerged. So I've always had a lot of respect 
for what they brought to the marketplace. I say all that even though I bought an Erie One 4.0 from a really big dealer and I had it in my hands. And this Erie One, I give him the cash for it. It's a mid-grade Erie One. After I hand him the cash, I literally take the book back and this is not one word of a lie. The entire case just like a butterfly, just opening its wings. Really? Came open, the Erie One slid out, hit the floor, the label floated down on top. I was like, this is unreal. And this was like right in the thick of all that controversy. I'm like, so what do I do? What's the right move here? Yeah. So he was like, do I need to buy it back? I said, well, let me just send it to CGC. It was a situation where CGC had just made a mistake. They didn't put glue in the uh, in the holder. And so I realized that there's a human element for sure yeah. to all business. I'm grateful for the fact that they were on it, they fixed it. I don't know if they charged me a fee, I really don't remember, but I do know, taken care of, same grade, I had them expect it. And so I lump all that in the same category. You know, there's gonna be mistakes. And when you're at the top of the food chain, everyone wants to take a shot at you. You know what I mean? So you're gonna have a lot of energy thrown at you because you're at the top of the food chain. But at the same time, since we're being very transparent here, I bought that Batman 1, that 4.5. Yeah. And a few people have come by the booth and they've inter done interviews that are on YouTube now and we were talking about the case and quite a few people actually touched the case after the, some of those YouTube this, videos. This is the CBCS one. CBCS yeah, one, sorry. Yeah. yeah, and so people were commenting about how quality the case was after they touched it, um, the value of the casing, and I've never in my life been more excited to submit to CBCS. I've submitted more books to CBCS since that Batman 1 purchase than that 4.5 than I have my entire life. CGC acquiring JSA, and now it looks like CGC is going to be able to do the authentication for signatures and all that. What's your what's your thought on that front? This is a really big deal for CGC, and I'm so glad there are two companies that can compete because that makes it better for us. It makes it better for you and I, the collector. Uh, it makes it better for the dealers. It makes it better for you know just a hobby enthusiast. Period. Right. So it just. It just really makes them perform at their A game, right? Competition, choice, oh. all that stuff. You know, we had the recent giant size X Men one, nine nine. Yeah. Hit the market. Uh, I guess my question to you is twofold. One, what were your initial impressions when you saw that? And then two, I know you as a dealer who has had some of those Hulk one eighty one nine eights, ASM one twenty nine nine eights. Knowing that this nine nine is out there, does it now make you? You know, think a little bit like, oh, maybe I should, you know, CPR this 181, or would you take that risk, or what's your thoughts on 99s in general? You know, what's it, to, to be very clear, I, I really don't know. I, here's my thoughts. My thoughts are, I can tell you what my philosophy was up until this, mm -hmm. right? My philosophy up until this, people would buy books for me, and I, I really want to win the relationship long term. So even if it means losing a sale or losing money in a sale. You know, that's why I train my employees. Right. We're gonna win the relationship long term. And so when people come up and they say, hey, you see that 98, uh, 298, you know, ASM, I'm gonna, can I buy that so I can go get so-and-so to sign it, et cetera, et cetera. I, I would always say, wait a minute, here's my thoughts on that. If it's already a 98, that's like taking a hit on, you know, a 20 and blackjack. Right. You, you can do it. Can it work? Sure, you can come right. back at nine eight. Right. But do you really want to risk that? Right. right. Especially if the dealer's showing a six. Yeah. You yeah. know, you don't want you don't want to risk that. And so that's always been my philosophy and I've kind of I try to impress upon the customer that it's not a good financial move. It's great for us. We're gonna sell a book. Right. right and right. we need to sell books to feed our family, to be able to pay the employees, to keep the business going. But at the same time, I just don't think that and the reason I, I'm saying this is because I did that myself as a collector mm. before a, as a dealer. And I did exactly that. And the reason I used that book as an example, because it was exactly that book mm. I took the hit on, where it came back in 9-6. You know, and I called CGC. I called the submission company. I called, I mean, I did everything I could to figure out how is this happening to me? How did I lose thousands of dollars 
like this, right? It's just by getting a signature on it. And, um, you know, and I understand their policies and I get it. And for me, unfortunately, it was a net negative. And I'll never forget it. It's a small amount of money in comparison to obviously the Batman one, et cetera, we were talking about. But it's still enough to where I learned a lesson. So I hope other people don't go into that. And in regards to the 99, how, I mean, if, if the policy is they're going to guarantee the 98, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Yeah. 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 If the margin, you just have to weigh the risk. Yeah. What's the margin, right? First of all, what justifies you thinking this is, could be a 99? What is it that you yeah. see in this book that makes you feel like this could be a 99? That number one, I think that's number one question. Number two, what do the margins look like? I mean, is the juice worth the squeeze? Right. Because if the juice is worth the squeeze, there's no, there's no reason not to. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so and and you don't have to be right every time if you do something like that. Right. You just got to be right one out of ten times. Right. And you win. And I think that's the case with the uh, the the nine nine GSX that mysteriously popped up. Yeah. I, this is my gut feeling that it was someone that probably had multiple 9.8s and said, this 9.8 looks better than that 9.8. And okay, if this one looks better than that one, maybe either this one's a 9.6 or this one's a 9.9. Right. And they rolled the dice. And when they rolled the dice, they won tremendously. It's very, very interesting. We'll have to uh, you know talk the next time once that book sells and see what it ends up selling for. But Nico, Brother. always a pleasure. Thank you Absolutely, so much for man. taking the time and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. All right, well, here we are back once again with Brad Sloan from FVF Comics. Brad, WonderCon 2024. The Mixter. It's always great talking to you. Thanks, It's buddy. always a pleasure. Thank you, guys. And, um, you know, th this one is a special video. This is a very important one because it's the first time I've been able to have conversations with all the dealers since so many things have occurred with Whoa. CGC. And so I wanted drama. to... Drama. Well, drama, you know, exciting things, yeah, nine yeah. nines, you know, all that stuff. So I kind of wanted to go through a bunch of them and, and just get your thoughts. And, and let me sure. start with the yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of the, the scam, scandal, reholder, book swapping situation that happened just a couple months ago. Yeah. And really my question to you is, as someone who's a dealer, you have a lot of customers, you do a lot of shows, have you noticed your clients showing any pause, any change in behavior, any reservations towards those books? You know, honestly, um, I have had nobody mention that to me other than talking to dealers. Hmm. No clients have asked me, should I worry about what I'm buying here? I have a feeling they're looking at stuff like Mark Jewelers inserts or Marvel value stamps and looking at them differently. But remember, the scam was about new labels, and mm. I'm a guy who really buys already graded books from people, and I buy them because I agree with the grading. If you notice, the grading companies, they're all over. They just, uh, uh, 2.5s that look like 4s, and 4s that look like 2.5s. I buy a comic to resell because I agree with the grade. That means my grading is consistent with a grader who put it in a case. So the, the idea is, should it scare people? Yes. Have they the ability to stop it? Easily. I suggest they get a little embossing kit, which you could buy at Ace Hardware, with a little ball peen hammer, and put the serial number embossed in the inner well. Why can't you put a serial number on the plastic that holds the comic? They can't lose that. If they cut that out, it's done. So, yeah, ow, I'm sad for people that might have one. Uh, sad for what it has done to scare uh, mostly dealers and people that have already bought one. Man, if you bought a Hulk 181 without a value stamp and you paid the high price, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I I wish it were different, but something like this was kind of bound to happen. I mean, um, there's there's evil in the world and money hungry and and technique. Guy had the technique. Yeah, yeah. It's very interesting. I mean, like you said, there's there's always opening themselves up to, you know, these types of 
scams and stuff. Any time there's money to be made, people are going to take advantage of it. And this is kind of where I'm transitioning to the next interesting thing, which is now we're entering the wild west of authenticated signatures. Yeah, well, they acquired JSA. And um, I mean, what do you think about this now? Like them kind of now providing the service that CBCS was doing with sign books. Are you, is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is it kind of like, okay, it makes sense? Is it open themselves up to scams? What, do you, what did you think about I that? I don't know. I can't really see a scam unless um, they don't do a good job and possibly uh, authenticate something that's not real. What else would it be? Uh, I think that they should have been able to do it a long time ago. Mm. Um, I personally have Jack Kirby signatures. That's where I go. Mm. How about to the people of past? Um, Neil Adams has signed a lot of personal books for people. Mm. Really nice signatures, inside pages. I have my original Avengers 4 signed by Jack Kirby on the first page. Mm. It's gorgeous. If we all know the story about Jack, uh, after he passed, even Roz was signing, and she got really good at it. Would they consider that a Jack signature? Mm. Maybe. And is that okay? In my book, yeah, because I'm just an old guy. And I think she deserves notoriety. But the idea is uh, CGC should have had this ability the moment CBCS did. Mm. Uh, hire the right people, authenticate signatures, give the signature series, Continue Witnessing, which is an awesome program. Uh, people that are alive, young artists, young collectors, uh, love signatures. Uh, me, not so much. I mean, I like them when they're inside. Uh, I certainly like signatures from people that have passed. I don't charge exorbitant prices for signatures, and here's the reason why. When I was getting my stuff signed by Stan in the 90s, it was free. Yeah. We could sit there and talk to him. Towards the end of his life, it was tough to watch, man. He was like bent over and, and, and his guys wouldn't let him talk to anybody. And he just, it was just working and the price went up and it was all about the money. And I mean, I, I get it. And they're lovely signatures on lovely books, especially early FF and that kind of thing. So, so I'm okay with it. Hmm. I don't see a scam coming. I see the ability for people to get um, ancient signatures verified and and enjoy that process um, is it gonna be a money maker for them yeah will they charge a lot sure um, good luck everybody and, and get it done I mean I think it's cool and then last topic that I want to get while I have you here they're not ta talking to all the dealers you know and I, I think that this topic has been maybe the most uh, interesting conversation everyone gives me the look when I ask them about this but uh, Giant Size X Men 1, 9.9, the big story. Oh, you know, yeah. the, the, the new uh, big kid in school. Has it gone on auction yet? It hasn't yet. You know, we'll, yeah. we'll certainly cover it when it, when it goes it on like sale. Is it like $100,000 copy? $200,000? From what I hear, I was like, okay, maybe this would be like 300 k And then I talked to someone yeah. at the show today who, without blinking, they said, I would easily pay 320 for that. So that to me, was an indication like oh okay this might be a half a million dollar book you know so Oof, what, I got an opinion on that one yeah so what do you think about the nine nine giant size and what's your kind of thought as a, as a dealer okay so look um, back in the early two thousands and we were getting things graded um, I saw a few tens and I think I remember the big hubbub about the ten um, a Wolverine miniseries Frank Miller that oh, was a yeah. it was a ten. And everybody saw it on, on eBay, and it got like $3,500, and it was probably a $40 book. But the, the truth is, how do you discern one-tenth of a point on a comic book that had to be handled to get to the marketplace? There was no robot no levitation and we're saying it's okay to have a 9-9 nine, nine. do I believe that it is real I am very skeptical about it I've seen 
nine eights that looked like nine fours, nine fours that looked like nine eights. And I see it all the time. Grading companies, thank you. You're doing for posterity what you should do. And you're putting in encapsulated comics, which I would rather smell, taste, enjoy, read. I've cracked every one I've ever bought out and put it in my collection. I don't care how expensive it is. But I don't grade my raw comics above a nine. Never have, never will. If I promise somebody a nine two and they come back a nine, they're not gonna come back. So I have all my nines, they're like mint. So they come running back. I got nine four, nine six, nine eight, Brad. I go, who you buying nines from? So my thing is, okay, so it's a nine nine and it's in the case. And everybody can agree, it's a nine nine, it's in the case, because it's in a case, it's a nine nine. Well, how do you know? Because it's in the case. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little questionable, but for that guy who finds that money to buy that 9-9 and he continues to keep it like that and he can ask whatever he wants, then this perpetuates a fervor for comic collecting. Mm -hmm. um, but I just can't promise people even two-tenths of a point. You can hardly see it with the naked eye. It's the tiniest little defect. What do they have, a nuclear microscope? I don't get it. It had to be handled. There has to be fingerprints on it. Should a 9-9 have any fingerprints? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's very, very interesting. We'll have to see what it Sorry. sells for. <laughs> we'll have to see if it opens up the doors to other comics. Maybe there's gonna be an ASM 129 9, nine come out at yeah. some point. Or 10. Or 10. But uh, you know, We'll definitely talk about it when it happens. But otherwise, Brad, always good to see Thank you. Thank you, Biggie. Thanks, guys. Everybody out there, keep collecting. Yep. And MVF we'll... Comics deals. Nines. Nine O's, which are, who knows? Maybe they're nine nights when you buy from him. Well, there you have it, guys. I want to say thank you once again to these dealers for taking the time to talk with me and share their insights. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are in the comment section down below. Remember to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this in the future. And if you really want to support, don't forget to check out the Kickstarter for my comic series, Sanity. We got just over one week to go in our campaign and every pledge goes a long way in helping us reach our goals. Link in the description. Thank you all for watching and see you in the next video.